See, I love rock pools and the seaside, and I always wanted to take them home with me as a kid, but I couldn't. But now, I'm an adult, so time to make a rock pool aquarium. Starting off really simply, we added an empty aquarium and we added some aragonite sand. This would help buff the water and it looks quite nice. I'm using artificial reef rock because again, it looks quite nice and I have some spare. You can see the pink ones I haven't used before and the green ones definitely have been. I also put a coral skeleton in there. Now this would act as a visual barrier and stop the fish attacking one another. I connected up the tank to a protein skimmer and a return pump and we were ready to go. Now we were filling up, it was time for an adventure. So, we were going to collect some different macro algae. They'd help fill the water, absorbing all excess nutrients, and, well, they'd give cover for the fish. And I used my little dip net to catch little creatures that I'd put in glass jars to take home. The key to rock pooling in the UK is to scoop up the macroalgae, because that's where normally the creatures are hiding in. And of course we also need some cleanup crew, so snails, limpets and oysters were all on the menu. We also grabbed some mussels as well, and to make sure we didn't damage them, we actually took the rock they were on. We also caught some little shannies, also known as common blennies, and they're vicious little monsters. Once we got home, I put a power head in, just to keep the water moving, and we added the macroalgae. Adding multiple varieties assured that some would live and some would die because the water inside my room is significantly warmer than the water outside. We also found a sea spider that came in on the macroalgae, which is a bit impressive to be honest. I never saw him again, but I liked it. We added the mussels and the oysters to help filter the water and you now it was time to add some of the creatures. First we had to temperature acclimate them. So, I put them in in their jars and we left them for a little while. Despite them not being strictly clean up crew, we had anemones and they'd kill any diseased or dying creatures inside the aquarium, increasing the overall health of the aquarium. We also caught a little boisterous shore crab inside of our common prawns as well. Now these prawns would act as scavengers, going around the aquarium picking up any uneaten bits of food. Now shannies are probably the most aggressive little fish in the UK. They hang out in gangs and they beat anyone up that comes near their food. Or even just look at them funny. Everyone came out quite quickly, the breadlet and enemies, the limpets, the snails. But, the Olympics did need a little bit of help. Just to write themselves. I always saw Mr. Crab out in the middle, with his claws up like he wanted to fight. So I gave it to him, and I won. A couple weeks later, the algae had grown out a little bit more, and everyone had started feeding. With the oyster and mussel beds, we had to feed them particulate food every day, otherwise they die quite quickly, because they eat food out of the water, along with the barnacles. And well, our snails, they needed to get put back in here quite a lot, because obviously they come from rock pools, and they're like getting out of the aquarium. Our breadlet and enemies, we had to feed brown shrimp and mysis on a fairly regular basis, and they seemed to enjoy it. The 
The prawns became so comfortable that they started cleaning themselves out in the open. And our little shanny dictators were committing war crimes on a regular basis. But everyone seemed okay at the end of the day, even if there was a little bit of fighting. After a couple months, the shannies seemed to really like me, and they'd follow me around the aquarium, and it helped that everything had grown in and they felt really safe. We did have a little bit of cyanobacteria, but that wasn't an issue, and it would go away by itself. Every day I'd come in, and the shannies would be sat on the macroalgae like it was a little sofa. Any time I put my hand in the aquarium, the prawns would just latch onto me immediately, cleaning my hands off. And if you looked really hard, you could see inside of the prawns, and you could see all the organs, which was slightly unsettling, but quite cool. We also had some gravid females with eggs, and it was nice to see, but we probably wouldn't have any babies. Every time we fed the bread little enemies, Prawns would come over and try steal the food, and they'd get a little bit of a zap. The shannies soon learned that they couldn't do this, even though they try, and they'd go round to see if they could find any way to get it. But the prawns just didn't learn. The shannies being so friendly gave me an idea. Maybe I could teach them to do tricks. And soon they figured out if they went through the hoop, they got some food. And they started doing it by themselves. Whilst I was training, obviously food did get stolen, but in the end, they got it. As tanks go, I think we did really well. I made the tank that I wanted as a child, and I had a bit of fun with it. The fish were happy. I wouldn't say the crab was happy, but he'd get away from everyone else, which was what he needed. The prawns were thriving as well. So that's where we we're gonna leave it, and hopefully I'll see you soon.